Hey folks, this is Kalani. Dragonflight has been an amazing expansion so far, and while it has introduced many new features and user interface options, sometimes you just can't beat the ingenuity and creativity of the community, so we turn to add-ons to improve our user experience. Whether you want to buy and sell items faster on the auction house, find treasures and rares faster and more reliably, speed up your leveling, mark important locations on your map, or just improve in dungeons, raids, or or any other type of content, I've got some must-have add-ons for you. I personally use all of these add-ons, and some of them I wouldn't go without. So that's what this video is going to be about. Here's our list of must-have add-ons for Dragonflight. Now before we jump in, be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. I want to start off with more general add-on recommendations that everyone can benefit from, and then we'll get to more specific ones later on. To start with, I think Rare Scanner is a fantastic add-on for this expansion. Rare Scanner will alert you when a rare or a treasure is found nearby. With how much content is currently focused on rare hunting and treasure hunting, knowing when and where these things pop up is going to help you out a lot. Rares and treasures are currently very valuable when it comes to spark hunting. I've seen a lot of people who say they've gotten multiple sparks already from farming rares, there's even one chap who has managed to collect nine sparks so far, which, if true, seems like you would never really need sparks again after that. So if you do a lot of rare farming, be sure to grab a rare scanner. Another thing that Rare Scanner does is plop a whole bunch of info on your world map. Rare locations, treasure locations, dragon glyph locations, all sorts of stuff, but I actually disable most of that in Rare Scanner and I use Handy Notes instead. I like Handy Notes better, both in terms of how it's displayed and how much information is here, and Handy Notes usually has the most up-to-date information, especially when it comes to new patches. If there's something to collect somewhere on the map, you can guarantee a Handy Handy Notes add-on will have it right after a patch goes live, which is always very useful. There's notes for special pets or mounts and how to collect them, there are key locations marked on the map like Cadin, the Master Artisan, there's just a lot of great info in Handy Notes and it's always kept up to date. So it's a great add-on for right now, but it will remain invaluable as more patches are added to the game and we get new zones to explore. Now before we continue, today's video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel any time. The box lineup is constantly changing, giving you access to cool new products like outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and even food, all based on the preference quiz you fill out. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. Every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside, but costs you only a fraction of the value. You also get to preview your box before it's shipped out, so you know exactly what's coming your way. You can decide whether you want to keep that box, swap it out for a different one, or you can even just skip that month's box for no charge, so you only pay for what you want. For example, the sizzle box contains a very nice carbon steel stir-fry pan, some bamboo cooking chopsticks, a bamboo steaming basket, as well as some condiments to kickstart your stir-fry adventures. Or there's the Rich Box. This one has a selection of specialty chocolate from a wide variety of niche brands with fascinating flavours and combinations. I can't wait to try them all. To get 20% off your first box of awesome, click the link in the description and use the code KALANI20 at checkout or go to bespokepost.com forward slash KALANI20. Another useful add-on for every kind of player is World Quest Tracker. World Quests have been very valuable so far in Dragonflight, and I imagine as new patches come out and we branch out into new zones and areas, World Quests will constantly be updated and be relevant for those early days and weeks of each patch. Having an add-on like World Quest Tracker just makes it easier and faster to see which World Quests are active, what the current rewards are, whether they're worth doing or not, and how long each World Quest has before a expires. You can also change how the world quests sort, which rewards to show, and a whole bunch of other options down near the bottom. So whether you're trying to find some gear upgrades, farm a specific currency or reputation, or just clear out every world quest to take advantage of things like contracts, having an add-on to help track world quests and their rewards is valuable, and my personal pick right now is World Quests Tracker. 
Continuing with the general use add-ons, I think another great option is OPI. OPI is very simple. It lets you create rings of keybinds on a keybind. So you can use one keybind to open up a ring with a whole bunch of different options that you might want to pick from. Mounts are a super common one here. One keybind to then choose between various dragon riding mounts or a two-seater mount or an old flying mount or maybe just a random mount. OPI makes it pretty and easy. I also personally use OPI for costume toys, things like Savory Deviant Delight and various toys to change your appearance. And then the other one I use the most is for consumables, food, different flasks and runes, so I can use one bind to make sure I have everything I need for whatever we're doing. If you really want to, you can also put rings inside of rings. I'm sure someone somewhere has figured out an actual efficient reason to do this instead of just making fun pie circles, but you know, at least you have that option. Another add-on that I refuse to go without is Postal. I know there are a lot of combo add-ons that sometimes include changes to how the mailbox works, but Postal is a standalone add-on that has everything I need in a mail add-on. It does a few things, but the main part I'm interested in is the ability to click a drop-down menu of names to send your mail to. This is insanely valuable if you have a lot of alts and like sending mail between them, and even worse if you have alts that are poorly named. Yeah, naming every character some variation of Kalani probably wasn't the best idea when it comes to sending mail to alts, but Postal makes it easy. I just click the drop down, go to alts, and they're all there. I also don't have to guess who's who thanks to the level and class marker, but this also works for recently mailed characters, friends, and your guild. It also helps you with autofills, you can quickly send various item types, and it's overall just much nicer than the baseline mailbox. Now, something else I would recommend everyone get is a nameplate add-on. There are a few out there, but I personally think the best one right now is Plater. Plater is very customizable, maybe too customizable, and you can get it to look pretty much however you want. You want wider nameplates, taller nameplates, you can tell them when to be hidden, when to get bigger, when to be emphasized. It's great! You can also tell them to look different depending on various things, like important casts to help with interrupting, and whether or not they have certain debuffs to help you with multi-dotting. You can change the colors, it's, it's crazy! This is actually probably the most asked for add-on and profile that I see in the comments section too, so now you know, it's Plater. And I will give you a link to the profile that I use in the description below. The best part about this add-on is that you can import and export profiles. So even if you can't come up with something that you really like by yourself, you can import a profile that might better suit your tastes. More on this in just a moment. The next one is a big one because it is infinitely useful but also quite complicated to get started with but I definitely think it's worth the effort. Weak Auras is an add-on you've probably heard thrown around a lot and it's hard to really encapsulate what this add-on does in a single sentence but quite simply Weak Auras lets you create a customizable visual cue for a wide variety of trackable options. The most popular uses are for tracking class and spec cooldowns and abilities. The big class weak aura packages that you often see, they are super cool if you can handle that amount of information right in front of you. They're also used to track important raid or dungeon boss abilities, buffs or debuffs. If you ever wanted something to be more obvious or larger on your screen in any encounter, chances are there is a weak aura that can do exactly that. It's a great add-on for all kinds of players. Personally, I use it for a few things. I track my debuffs with timed bars, as well as stacks of buffs and a combo point like style, that's how I digest info the best for my boomkin. I also then use a weak aura to keep track of my mouse because there's nothing worse than trying to find your mouse when you're using certain abilities. Now, while you can create your own weak auras, I definitely don't recommend you try at the start, but kudos to you if you do, you can import weak auras from other players. But there is one huge repository of weak auras to pull from, wago.io. I don't even really know where to begin here, besides saying that you just have to kind of go digging for yourself. Whether you want weak auras for class or spec abilities to track cooldowns and procs and all that jazz, that's in there. There are weak auras to help track things in dungeons or the raid, to help you in PvP, to track rare kills for the day, to track progress in various systems and features. It's pretty overwhelming, but it's totally worth looking through. There are also profiles you can import for Plater, which is what I did. I'll give you a link in the profile as I said. There are profiles for Opie, if you want to give that a go, Voodoo, DBM, and even the standard Blizzard UI. There are even profile imports for that. So it's a very valuable resource, and it just makes these add-ons that much better and easier to use. 
Moving on, another very useful add-on that everyone should have is a damage meter. Once again, there are a couple of these out there, but the best one on the market right now has to be Details. Details is a damage meter with a whole bunch of extra functionality added in. You can see damage done, healing done, dispels, interrupts, deaths, with a death log to see exactly how you died or other people died, damage taken, healing taken, really the list goes on. It tracks everything and displays it in a very neat way, so no matter what kind of performance you want to track, details will have you covered. It's also incredibly useful for checking damage breakdowns. What deals the most damage, how trinkets are performing, whether your talent choices are improving your damage or maybe hindering it. You can compare damage between the same specs and classes to see why someone has more damage overall and what spells they're using more often, and it's just a great tool to help you improve in your role. If you don't know how much damage or healing you're doing, you can't really work towards improving because you can't measure any improvements. So I would definitely recommend everyone get a damage meter. Even if you don't use the other bits and bobs, details can help you improve and track your own progress, even if you're just hitting some training dummies. This next one is a bit strange, but it has so many useful tools that I just had to include it. Leatrix Plus gives you easy access to a whole suite of quality of life options. Now, I mainly use this for the automation stuff. You can automate your quest pickups and turn-ins to help speed up leveling, gossip options to get through NPC chatter faster, accept summons or resurrections, as well as sell junk and repair automatically at vendors. These are the most important two for me. There are even extra options now to ensure you don't sell greys that you you don't have the transmog for, which is really nice, but you can also set up a whole bunch of options for social interactions, like duels or party invites. There are a lot of different chat options to take advantage of, with other options for your interface and frames, and a whole bunch of system changes too, like muting certain sounds or disabling certain effects. The breadth of this add-on is very impressive, so you're sure to find something in here that's worth installing the add-on for, even if it's just for the automated junk selling and repairing at a vendor. Another add-on that I have made great use of in this expansion is TomTom. Tom. Not only will it give you coordinates on your map and on the screen without having to install any other add-on, but the ability to mark waypoints on the map and have an arrow showing you exactly where to go is just invaluable. I use TomTom Tom all the time when I pick up a new profession to quickly mark and collect all of the hidden treasures out in the world as well as the hidden masters. It's just so easy. It almost feels like cheating. You can use TomTom Tom for many other reasons and it will remain valuable for as long as coordinates are important, which, let's be honest, is going to be forever, so it's a great add-on to keep in your back pocket. Now I also have some great suggestions if you're diving deep into professions in Dragonflight. To start with, Auctionator. This add-on gives you a few additional windows for the auction house which have way more options when compared to the baseline UI. The shopping window lets you search for any items, I also think it's faster than the base experience, but that might just be my mind playing tricks on me. You get a history list on the left so you can quick search for items you have searched for recently, you can create shopping lists to quickly search for multiple items at the same time, and you can you can even track the history of prices by right clicking on items which can also be very useful. On the selling tab everything in your inventory is neatly laid out so you can just click on them to see what you can sell them for. It's all quick, easy and in one place which is really nice. There's also some history tabs at the bottom so you can keep an eye on how prices are changing. And then the cancelling tab lets you quickly scan through your auctions on the auction house to see which ones have been undercut, so you can then cancel them if you want to. All in all, it just provides you with extra options on top of the baseline auction house experience, so it's definitely worth picking up. The next big profession related add-on I would recommend is Profession Shopper List. This one does a few very cool things. First, it replaces the recipe tracking feature with a clean little list menu that separates the recipe name with the items you actually need it for. This list also adds the same reagents or required items together, so instead of having the item twice with different quantities, it just adds them together so you know you need 12 watsits to cover all of your tracked recipes, so that's really nice. When you're done, if you want to clear the list, you can just type slash PSL clear and you've got a fresh slate ready to add up some different recipes. 
But the part I absolutely love about this add-on is the profession knowledge tracking. This add-on shows you which sources of profession knowledge you have obtained for the week, and more importantly, which ones you haven't tapped into yet. This does seem to include every weekly source, as well as major one-time sources for profession knowledge, so as long as you follow this checklist, you should be able to max out your profession knowledge for the week quite comfortably. I've been trying to keep up with multiple professions across different characters, so this list has been amazing for me. Moving on, let's look at some great add-ons for group content, starting with Pre-Made Groups Filter. This is a case of an add-on that does exactly what it says on the tin. It gives you various options to filter out groups in the Group Finder feature. What more could you want? So you can filter for content type, difficulty, lockout, rating, all that stuff. But then you can also filter by group member. So if you're a tank, or you have a tank in your group, you know you can't sign up for a dungeon group that already has a tank. So you can filter those out. The same goes for a healer. Usually when we pug we're a group of three, a healer and two DPS. So whenever I use the filter I just filter to max healer zero and max DPS one. That will give me any groups that do not have a healer and do not have two DPS. So I can then fit in my two DPS and one healer group into that already created group. It just really helps clear out the noise and the clutter and lets you queue for groups you actually want to be a part of and will actually accept you. In addition to all of that, there's a quick join feature here. You don't have to click on a group and click sign up. Just left clicking on a group will prompt the role check, so you can sign up for groups much faster, which might just be the difference between you getting invited or not. Another great add-on for group content is some kind of boss timer. You can use DBM or Big Wigs and Little Wigs, both work perfectly fine. I actually always have both installed, but only turn on Big Wigs most of the time, unless Big Wigs doesn't have an accurate update, like at the start of a patch or a raid tier, then I will use DBM until Big Wigs gets updated. So use whichever you prefer. If you go for Big Wigs, you will need Little Wigs to cover dungeon timers as well. Boss timers are super simple, the add-on will give you a countdown bar for key abilities so you know exactly what ability is coming next and how long you have until that ability should next be seen. Having these timers lets you plan your actions out, you get to be proactive instead of purely reactive. If you rely on being reactive to things, it's always going to be slower and less reliable than being proactive, so you can position better, you can know exactly what you're going to need to dodge next, and ultimately you will just perform better in your role no matter matter what it is. Boss timers are an absolute must have if you're venturing into higher end group content. And then we also have some great add-ons for Mythic Plus specifically, like Angry Keystones. Angry Keystones provides you with a better breakdown of your dungeon run. You can see the differences here between the base stock UI and what Angry Keystones presents you with. For starters, knowing where your plus one, plus two, and plus three timer marks are is very useful, and you get a better idea of how quickly you are progressing through your dungeons. It also gives you timestamps for when bosses or objectives were completed, which you can use as another marker for how quickly the dungeon is going, but also where you started to struggle so you can make a note for future runs. It also shows you the percentage trash to two decimal places, which is pretty important because not all trash rewards a rounded full percent credit, which is annoying and the base UI really should show that accurately. So in general, Angry Keystones is just better than the base UI for showing your Mythic Plus dungeon progress. Another good option is Astral Keys. This add-on shows you the current weekly affix list, as well as the next two weeks in the rotation. It notes which key you have, what your current weekly best is, and then it also has a long list of keys available from your guildies and friends. So you can see who has which keys at what level, so you can maybe ask to run a specific key with that specific person, if you happen to need it for loot or maybe for score, whatever it is. So you can better plan out your next Mythic Plus Key Night. It's worth noting that if you have the Details Damage Meter, that add-on also has a built-in option to see what keys people have. Just type slash keys in chat and you'll be able to see anyone in your group or anyone in guild. I think they do have to have details installed as well for this to work, but the vast majority of players probably have details at this point, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. The main limitation here is that it only posts for people who are online, whereas something like Astral Keys can do it while they're offline, but it's great to see what keys can be run right away. 
And then if you want to get deep, deep into Mythic Plus Dungeons, you want to look at Mythic Dungeon Tools. This one is kind of insane and is incredible for tanks especially. This add-on lets you see a map of the entire dungeon with every trash mob included with percentage values what they're worth for the trash portion of a Mythic Plus Dungeon. You can draw lines, annotate, create pull groups and just generally plan out a dungeon run without having to actually go through the dungeon. And if you don't want to do all of that work yourself, you can also import these maps or routes from external sources like Raider.io and the weekly route updates there. These routes might not work for everyone and they might not be the most ideal route for your group, but they're a great place to start if you're wanting to try and tank Mythic Plus dungeons especially. Knowing what trash is recommended to skip and what you should kill to get that 100% requirement without going too much over will save you a lot of time in Mythic Plus dungeon runs, so Mythic Dungeon Tools is great if you want to get super serious about Mythic Plus dungeons in general. Now this last recommendation is not an add-on, so forgive me for the sneakiness here, but it is a website that I have found to be incredibly useful. Subcreation.net takes out all of the legwork of sifting through Mythic Plus dungeon runs on Raider.io or on Warcraft logs, as well as bosses for the exact same thing. It takes all of this info and breaks it down into very easy to read and easy to use summaries. This is the front page, so you would click on Mythic Plus, Vault of the Incarnates, or the PvP section. Let's use the Mythic Plus section as an example real quick. The first First thing you see is a tier list. Now what's interesting here is that this is real time info. This is how far each class and spec has managed to get, that's how I understand it anyway. So when you see that warrior tanks are ahead of guardian druid tanks, that's not an opinion that warriors are better than druids, that's actual dungeon runs showing that warriors are running keys much higher than druids right now, in the current week with the current affixes. The same goes for every DPS and healer roll too. This is how far each spec has gone so far in the current week and it's just comparing them against each other. You can change the affixes up at the top left and you can also look at all affixes. So this is a better general picture of Mythic Plus dungeons and which classes are doing well, but it also shows which dungeons are the easiest and which affix weeks are the easiest too. It's just chock full of information, but it goes one step further. If you click on your spec, you can also see all of the talent variations that people are running, how popular each talent setup is, and what the highest key is that each talent setup has run. And then you can scroll down. It breaks down what gems people are using which pieces of tier set people are using, popularity of enchants, weapons, trinkets, and even individual items. And this is currently the overall Mythic Plus info. At the top you can swap the dungeon and it will give you specific info for how players are setting up their characters for that specific dungeon. It's absolutely insane. Over on the raid side of things, you can do the exact same thing as well, except it breaks down everything on a per boss basis as well. So if you want to see what talents people are running for a specific boss, like Teros because it's just pure single target, you can easily check that boss, look at or copy the talent tree and import it for your character. You can also check everything else like gear lists, best trinkets, best enchants, all that wonderful stuff. The best part about this website is that it's all in one place, and it updates as the weeks go by, so if you find yourself digging through Warcraft logs a lot or Raider.io to see what folks are running, this website might be very interesting to you. Now there are a lot of add-ons in this list, so I figure it's also a good idea to give you something that can manage your add-ons to make getting them and updating them much easier, and that's where WowUp comes in. There are a handful of options out there, but WowUp seems to do the job pretty well for me, so that's what I've been rolling with. You can very easily get new add-ons, update add-ons, and manage your add-ons for various versions of the game. There are also two versions of WowUp, one that interacts with CurseForge, and one that interacts with Wago. They have different add-ons depending on where they are hosted, so I just download both versions and use them both to update my entire add-on catalogue, and that works well enough for me. So if you don't have an add-on manager yet, and you don't want to download everything manually, I would recommend WowUp. But that's our list of must-have add-ons for Dragonflight, and a few of them handy-dandy recommendations. This is by no means an exhaustive list. I'm sure there are plenty of amazing add-ons out there that I haven't been exposed to. These are just the ones I have come to love over the years, and I highly recommend for the Dragonflight expansion. Are there any add-ons on this list that you're going to give a try? Are there any must-have add-ons that you would recommend to everyone that did not appear on this list. Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to all of our members here on YouTube. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you'd like to add your name to the end of every video with a special shout out at the start of the next video, you can find links in the description over to Patreon or click the join button just below this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.